Hola, mi amigo. We are back, baby. We are back. Episode 17. Edge of 17. Welcome back to the Daniel Dargan podcast. It is good to have you here, mi amigo. We're back. Let's say with another banger, will we? Absolutely. So, in this episode, we're going to run through Monk Mode. What is Monk Mode? What are the positives of Monk Mode? The dangers of Monk Mode, my Monk Mode protocol, and how you can use Monk Mode to level up your life, but use it the right way. So you see, probably seen, maybe have or haven't seen the idea of Monk Mode circulating around social media in the past couple of years, and Monk Mode is something which completely changed my life. And, you know, firstly, I think let's let's get a definition so you actually know exactly what that is. So, you know, I, I looked up, the exact definition of monk mode and it says monk mode is inspired by the disciplined lifestyle of monks it refers to intense periods of uninterrupted focus to optimize for productivity it's the decision to shut out all external distractions in favor of focusing on one core idea it is a complete immersion into you into growth into personal development and this is something which completely changed my life and it's not easy it's absolutely not easy and you know what monk mode done for me uh it allowed me to really grow as an individual i probably went into monk mode shall we say in 2021 2021 just off the back of a breakup didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. And then a couple of months later, I figured out that, you know, I'm going to go down the avenue of coaching. I felt like I finally had a purpose in what I was doing. And that's where, you know, the early morning get-ups, the 5am get-ups, training hard, eating clean, not partying, not drinking, not taking drugs. I completely dialed in on me. And that's what that could look like. Uh, that You know, my monk mode protocol was training five days a week, no alcohol no porn, no drugs, obviously, and uh, it's not something I've done for geez, years and years, breath work, once daily, and then also looking at ice baths once daily as well, so the tra- obviously that incorporates everything from your training, from your food, to, you know, looking at the hurdles and the roadblocks with your alcohol and your drugs, uh, and then also as well, making sure that you have your breath work nailed as well, so you're pushing forward on all fronts and there's yeah of course there's so many positives to this you know when i went through this period uh i just why why did i want to do it in the first place i felt like i was a feather in the wind a complete feather in the wind back in 2021 obviously i've spoken about it on the podcast before but i felt like my back was against the wall i know girlfriend no direction in where I wanted to go with my life and I just felt like I was a weak man and I believe that we should go through life you know striving to be the strongest uh, man that we possibly could be and you know I always say to my guys and my clients I'd say you're going to be the strongest motherfucker in your bloodline and that's what I I wholeheartedly tell myself that I want to be the strongest person in my bloodline I want to be someone that can stand whole through adversity and I don't want to feel like I'm a feather in the wind to my emotions. I see that all too often uh, nowadays. And that's fine to be emotional, but it's not fine to let that dictate our lives and let how we feel dictate what we want to do with our lives. So yeah, looking at the monk mode protocol, there are dangers to it, of course. There are positives to it. And you know, what did monk mode do for me firstly? Uh, well, you know, I delved into my training, obviously eating well. I completely cut out uh, those things and, you know, it allowed me to really level up because beforehand what I was doing was going out of the weekends. I was maybe training hard throughout the week. I was maybe getting the head down. But then at the weekends, I was going out and sending it. And then I was catching my tail. I was maybe drinking. I was maybe taking drugs. And then come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I was always catching my tail. I was always playing catch up. And you never get ahead when you're trying to catch up. Everybody knows that. And it's the reason why so many people are stuck and they're questioning, why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? Mate, when was the last time you went through a period with no alcohol? And personally, I, I, like, I, I'm not sober and I don't intend to ever be. I, I just don't feel like I need to say, I'm not, I'm going completely alcohol free. If I want to have a beer, I can have a beer. Absolutely. You know, I feel like I'm in a position now where uh, I have absolute self-control. 
and even if I do go on an edit, I can still get up and operate the next day. That's why I feel I'm in this. I'm in that position now where for so long I didn't drink because I felt like if I drank, you know, I would just go. I would just go off the rails. But anybody that wants to improve their life, anybody that wants to push hard uh, in one aspect of their life or really improve themselves, whether that be with their business, whether that be with their their physique, if someone is really serious about doing it, then there's nothing more beneficial than going uh, going sober and going for three, six months and going with no alcohol. And that that means maybe saying no, not maybe, it means saying no to nights out. That might me saying no to certain social occasions. That's okay. That is fine. And in my eyes, the way I look at it is if I can't say no to a night out to going on the drink once for 12 weeks or for 24 weeks out of 80 years, then I've got bigger fish to fry. So that's how I, that's how I conceptualize it in my head. But we want to look at these as short stints of monk mode of short stints of personal development uh because at the end of the day we want to also yes of course we want to have a life too but i feel like if we want to achieve anything great we need to double down you know i look at the likes of kobe bryant the likes of ronaldo the likes of uh like elon musk they've went through like and again i don't want their lives at all so you know we take take that with a pinch of salt but they didn't get to where they were they didn't become world class at anything by having balance they didn't get there by going on the drink at the weekends it just didn't happen let's be real here so if we want things that other people don't have we got to do things that people don't do right so looking at what that gave me it gave me self-control it gave me structure it showed me how to build habits and routines and you know if you're sitting here listening to this podcast and you're thinking you know i don't really do what i say i'm gonna do you know i I maybe nail things for a couple weeks and then go off like i want you to look at when you go off with most people it's when they have a night out then they're back to square one like you you're feeling you're building momentum you're moving forward you have a heavy night out and boom you're back to square one if that keeps happening why not just take it by the roots just go to the root of the problem remove alcohol from the situation for a short period of time and see how you get on what's the worst that could happen your friends are always going to be there after the night out are always going to be there the alcohol is always going to be there But as we grow older, there's going to be more and more friction. You're going to have more and more commitments. And it's going to be harder to really double down on just just solely focus on you. That's why I feel like everybody should do this. Everybody should go through a period of really just locking in. And yeah, like I honestly, I honestly believe everybody should commit to this for some period of life to see what's possible because if you don't you're never going to figure out what it is that you're actually capable of doing there was this quote which i heard from chris williamson's podcast on modern wisdom and you know he talks about going to jordan peterson one of his live shows and somebody in the audience asked jordan peterson this question and i'm going to read it to you i thought it was so powerful the guy in the audience said the depth of my consciousness causes me to suffer it is a blessing or a curse to feel everything so is it a blessing or a curse to feel everything so deeply and peterson says the only way out is through you take more of the thing that poisons you until you turn it into a tonic that girdles the world around you how powerful is that damn when i heard that first i was like damn (laughs) and it really resonated with me you know, when I first leaned away from the party scene and started trying to work on me, that felt like a poison. That felt like a poison. Uh, doubling down that milk mode, that felt like a poison. It was so difficult. But the only way is through. If you keep doubling down, keep putting one foot in front of the other, that's going to be the one thing then makes you down the line. That's my interpretation of that. That's how I related that to my life. But there are dangers to monk mode. There are dangers to this. And I feel like we've got to the stage where personal development is making people weird. It's making people weird. I'm one of these guys. Locking in for so long, not socialising. And you end up losing your social skills. You end up losing your ability to communicate effectively and articulate your message and articulate your thoughts concisely and coherently. 
because you're not doing that consistently. You're not putting in the reps. I honestly believe some of the best personal development that I've ever experienced was actually from nights out, was actually from partying. Does that mean I do that all the time? No, absolutely not. But there was such a time, there was a time and place for that. And I feel like so many people are robbed nowadays of that growth because they're everybody's so focused on personal development. And yeah, I absolutely love that. Okay, like I understand. I'm talking about the people that you know going and doing monk mode and like double down for a short period of time. I'm talking about people that maybe they've been imbalanced the other direction for a long period of time, right? But I don't regret those party days. They they honestly, they made me. And being able to communicate effectively, that's what made me. But I honestly feel like somewhere along the way, I look back and, you know, I really question myself. But when, you, when you're going through that period, the lonely period, that's essential for growth, right? You can't have the growth without the lonely period, in my opinion. That is essential because your family, your friends, everybody will question why you're doing what you're doing. And that's where you need to push on. But I also believe somewhere along the line, when you've experienced success, when you've experienced the fruit of your labor and you've tried that, you also need to reintegrate back into society. Like the idea of monk mode is so that you better, that you step away, you better yourself, you isolate, and then you go back and really do get into society as a better version of you, as the best version of you so you could thrive and live your best life. But so many people never reintegrate and they use this isolation as a badge of honour that they don't go out, that they don't do anything, that they don't see people. But then these people turn out to have no social skills they cannot communicate effectively they can't communicate normally and they just think that everybody else that isn't on this grind isn't on this monk mode isn't on this personal development wave is strange and that they're losers and that they're doing life the wrong way i completely disagree i thought you know i had the complete i've had such a mindset shift in the past 12 months that you know of course if i didn't do them if i didn't do the monk mode and go all in i never would have achieved and got the, the level i have so far and i have so much more to go but i also feel like you need to ask yourself what are you optimizing for you know, for so long, I was just optimi- I was optimizing for business. I was optimizing for growth. And, you know, it came to a certain position where I was just like, right, okay, I need to I need to make a pivot here and actually optimize for fulfillment. Uh, and, you know, that's why I've traveled so much in the past, uh, in the past six months. I have barely been home since the start of February. So it's important that we integrate socializing as part of this monk monk protocol make sure that you're seeing your friends at the weekend that might be going out every so often that's okay as long as the the rest of the time that you're on the ball and if you feel like you're in a, and if you're in a position where you're like right okay i want to double down i want to go monk mode is it more conducive to just completely cut out alcohol in my opinion yes but until you've done that for a short for say three months then reintegrating that back into your life in moderation that's okay I have a rule that, you know, I never drink, I don't drink um, two weekends back to back. That's, I, I do not do that because that always just keeps me out of that loop. That always keeps me in that healthy loop of always being back on track. So, let me see, I noted down some of the dangers. Yeah, obviously, I mean, very simple. Yeah, lack of social skills, lack of fulfillment, and that those are the two greatest dangers of monk mode and you know you really need to ask yourself if i'm not having fun in my life if i'm not having if like if i have this is a conversation i had with my mentor i said you know what is the point in me having fuck you freedom if i never say fuck you and i got to a certain position with my business at the start of this year where you know we were in the best position we'd ever been but i didn't feel like i was really fulfilled and, you know, you have the option of really pushing hard, doubling down and, you know, taking it to a place that has never been, but taking it to like a, a different stratosphere entirely or optimize, shifting and optimizing for fulfillment. And, you know, I, I know that one day I'm going to look back and I'm going to be so glad I did that because I have the rest of my life uh, to really push hard and, you know, things are still moving forward. But I wanted to optimize for quality of life because I want to look back and know that I exercised my ability to go and explore the world travel and be free 
because at the end of the day what is the point in all of this i moved the i moved fully online so that i could travel so i obviously we could get better results uh but i wanted to i wanted to live a quality life which i was fulfilled i wanted to live a quality life where i was fulfilled and if i didn't do that then what's the point in any of this what is the point because then I'm not the best version of me because I'm not fulfilled. And then I don't bring the best version of myself to my clients. And I don't want that. I want to show up for them the best version of me at all times. And if that means uh, me traveling, then that's what I do. Absolutely. Whilst I continue working. And I think the drink and the drugs, that's a, that's a, that's huge. I think that's the biggest. The drink, drugs, and the mobile phone. Those That is the three biggest roadblocks that i see across the board number one with your phone like i'll i'll be real with you here i spent this was uh this will be going out next week so last monday i just had a day it was probably the le- it's probably the least productive i've ever been the least productive day that i have ever been and i you know i i, I, I honestly i went through my day and i probably went onto my phone a lot earlier than i would have my social media and you know, I, I just had one of those days where I just wasn't feeling it. And like, you know, I, to be fair, I have days like that all the time, like where I'm not feeling it at all. Uh, but, you know, we just felt way lower than usual. And, you know, I just felt like I wasn't really having a productive day. I couldn't get in the flow. And, you know, I just wasn't enjoying myself. But that's okay. You know, it's said to my, I said it to my girlfriend, actually. And sometimes I'm hesitant to open up about that. I'm hesitant to open up and tell her that she had a, like, I'm actually not feeling the home. Not that I'm not feeling the home, I'm just not, not on it today. She was like, that's cool. And I said, yeah, absolutely. You're going to have days like that. And that's what makes the good days great, right? That's what makes the good days great. Is when you have those days. But the alcohol and the drugs, that should be, I honestly believe, especially with drugs, like that should not be, in my opinion, if you're trying to grow, that should not be part of your life. And, you know, it's, I talk to guys all the time. I speak to hundreds and hundreds of people in my DM. And, uh, you know, I think they're one of the biggest killers. Obviously, yes, with social media, that's huge. Uh, and I suppose off the back of what I did that day. So uh, the following day from, you know, that day where I wasn't really productive, I I got up, smashed, uh, smashed an ice bin. I went for a run. And, you know, I put Opal on the app blocker for eight hours. Uh, so, you know, I woke it up, smashed two podcasts, uh, being super productive, made videos, done check-ins. And I just feel completely different today. Completely different. So, you know, the one thing which was a big part of my day yesterday, which I felt like was just, you know, was it was giving me a very foggy, foggy mind. I wasn't clear between the ears. It's not there today. And I feel fantastic. So, yeah, look at the one thing that you've changed. That's your answer to take out. But as I said, drugs, if that's, if you're trying to grow, that's, that's one thing. I just don't believe that that's, gonna move anybody forward i know it's not gonna move anybody forward and uh it's like people smoking weed and they're like oh yeah but it's not it's not it's, it's not a hard drug mate in my opinion that causes more devastation than anything because that is one thing which can be ever present in people's lives and they can justify it to themselves that it's okay because they can just do it here and there and it just chills them out and it's natural that makes people lazy it makes it stops people from becoming a go-getter and it's honestly i've seen it crush people there was uh, a guy that i used to know and you know he had so much potential he had so much potential and i honestly felt like this guy was going to go to the moon one of the best personalities of anyone i've ever met so much charisma and i said to him i was like mate you're going to be on tv you're going to be incredible and you know he it was sad because he was training hard and you know he stopped and uh he turned to to weed to marijuana he was smoking a lot and he was very lazy he was sleeping in he wasn't going to work and uh you know he just it i just i just seen part of it, that that spark in him just die and I, I tried to help him so much but uh there's only so much that we can do right but i've seen it ruin so many lives I've seen it ruin so many lives so like and you can kid yourself for as long as you want but that's that's holding you back that's holding you back and i i, I honestly said that like any client that comes on board and you know like that's that's one of my biggest red flags like as, as a you know as if if somebody smokes weed that's one of my biggest red flags that's my biggest turn off and i'm no issue saying that you know and i'm not in a position where i've been in, i've been an angel all my life you know like i've definitely you know, i 
spent years partying. But I've seen firsthand that ruined so many lives. So many people's potential, making them lazy. It's the catalyst to losing their spark. And I don't want that for anybody. So I don't know how we got on that tangent, but I just feel like that's important. Uh, you know, someone might be in a position where they're feeling like, where that's that's in their life and, you know, they're, they feel like they have no get up and go. Yeah, remove that from your life. And where do you see? Where do you see that spark come back? Uh, it's going to be insane. Uh, so yeah, all in all, like monk mode, was it something which is beneficial for me? Absolutely. Uh, do I recommend it? Yes. But in doses, I don't re- recommend doing monk mode for tw- for 18, 12, 18 months. Like, have a heavy blitz for six months and then take a month and just chill out. And I don't mean like stop working or do like start just go mad. I just mean take a month where you're, you know... <laughs> You're being a bit more of a normal human being, but I don't think there's anything wrong with doubling down to get the place where you don't want it, where you know other people aren't. It's like when I wanted to grow my social media, I stopped going out completely. I spent my Saturdays, my Sundays working, scripting, filming, and I accepted my social life was gonna suck so bad. And I used to go out like I, used to, my girlfriend Tia, she lives in London, and you know she said we spoke about it at the weekend there, and she was like it was kind of sad to see that because she's. You, didn't, you seem kind of sad at times at the weekends. And was I sad? No. Was I lonely? Yeah, for sure. You know, my friends were going out to the beer gardens and part of me wanted to go, but I knew that if I'd done that, I wouldn't be fresh to get up and film the next day. And that's okay. That was the sacrifice I needed to make. And I used to go out, I used to go to Boozham on a Saturday night and I would sit and watch Netflix on my phone in Boozham and I would come home, watch Netflix and get an early night and that would be me. You know, my mum and dad were very social, so they were out, everybody was out, and that was for a good 12 months, and it felt quite, it felt very lonely, but it was all worth it. It's always worth it in the end, because that's allowed me to have the freedom and flexibility in my life now to, that's, you know, that I've always wanted. And if I never done that, if I never embraced that suck, if I never took a hit with my social life, I never would have got to where I am. So if you're in a position where, you know, you're not happy with how you look and feel, accept that a period, 6, 8, 12, 24 weeks of doubling down and making sacrifices and accepting that it's going to suck, that's going to get you the life that you want. That is a fact. And people online will tell you otherwise. They'll say, oh, you can have balance, you can have balance. You need imbalance first and then level out with balance. That's the only way. It's the only way is through every single time because otherwise you just get caught in that loop then. You always get caught in that loop. So yeah, doubling down and asking yourself the question, what am I actually optimizing for? Am I optimizing for quality of life? Am I optimizing for my physique? Am I optimizing for business? Am I optimizing for relationships? What is that? And accepting that another facet of that, another facet there might take a hit. If you're optimizing for relationships or a social life, your physique might take a hit. It doesn't have to, but it, you might not be in the most shredded position you've ever been. And that's okay. It depends what you're optimizing for. Back then, I was optimizing solely just business solely just business nothing else uh obviously yes i was training hard as well but that was my focus was business and you know it, it, it paid off you know last year my sole focus was literally physique uh coming up the summer and you know it got in the shape of my life past six months it's been fulfillment and traveling obviously yes business still pushing forward we're still getting incredible results with our guys but fulfillment has been key and you know i've, I've never felt happier so Yeah, ask yourself, what am I optimizing for? What am I willing to sacrifice? And ask yourself the question, if I don't sacrifice this, where am I going to be? Am I really going to get to where I want to go? Am I really going to see my potential? Because if the answer is no, then of course, that's something that you have to be okay with. And everyone wants different things, right? Like you don't need to be shredded. You need to have a business where you can travel, do whatever you want. Like there's so much to be said for stability. There's so much to be said for, you know, just being content with what you have i get that but this is if you're in a position where you're not happy or you feel like you're you're built for more then the the, this is the catalyst to that this is absolutely the catalyst so yeah double down and i want to hear how you're getting on as well like if anybody's committing to this i'd love to hear how you're getting on shoot me a message on instagram but it completely changed my life
and it doesn't have to remain like that forever. You know, I'm going to Ibiza in two weeks or it'll be one week by the time this comes out. And, you know, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm going to be a normal human being <laughs> again. Well, I suppose I have been for the past six months. But I'm looking forward to it. And it all comes down to ultimately sacrificing what you want now for the thing that you want the most. Sacrificing what you want now for the thing you want the most. Are you willing to sacrifice your social life now to get into the shape of your life in three months' time? Are you willing to sacrifice your free time to build a business and give you the freedom that you've never had before? And the beauty is the choice is yours. The choice is yours. Of what kind of life you want to lead. And hopefully this podcast, this conversation can be a spark for somebody. Somebody out there could be listening to this and they think, mm, you know what, I'm built for more. I'm, I'm finally going to double down. I'm finally going to block out the noise. And, you know, I suppose probably one of the biggest things that I'd said about Monk Mode, uh, one of the things that I forgot to say was one of the challenges of Monk Mode is being questioned by other people. Is being questioned by other people. And you have to be so firm in your identity with that. You have to be so clear why you're doing what you're doing. And understand that people are going to chastise you. And understand that if you give in, then you're serving them and not you. You're serving them and not you. So sometimes actually just removing yourself from that environment full stop can be really helpful. But if we want to be great, we got to do exceptional things. So big love. I hope that was helpful. If it was, I'd love you to let me know. Let me know how you're getting on. And as I was with one set, let's go, baby. Big love.